Hello. Come right on in. You're at Father Fish. Nice to have you with us. The solution is plants. Plants, plants, and more plants. You can never have too many plants. The more plants you have, the more fish you can have. That's the rule. You want a lot of fish, you got to have a lot of plants. More plants, more fish. Like that. Do not skimp on plants. Don't do it. Put, put adequate plants in there. You, you want to have a lot of plants. There's some people for whom one or two plants is a lot. That's not a lot. That's a little. One or two plants, unless they're great big, huge Amazon mother plants, that's not a lot of plants. One little bunch, one little bunch of stalk plants, the stem plants, is not adequate for anything other than a bed of bowl. It's not adequate for a five gallon tank, much less a 10 gallon. Here's a, here's a, here's, a, try this, a 10 gallon tank. In a 10 gallon tank, if I want to plant it out, I will put five to six bunches of plants. Um, I will put some Anubias or Java fern uh, attached to wood or rock. I will put um, uh, uh, some small swords or, or other small rooted plants. And perhaps um, like chain sword. I like chain sword or Vallisneria. Uh, corkscrew valve always looks nice. Like a dozen or so corkscrew valve. That would be like two bunches of corkscrew valve. Um, five or six bunches of stem plants. Maybe some water wisteria or uh, uh, what's the other one? Water wisteria, water, water sprite. Thank you. <laughs> no duckweed. <laughs> Try to keep the duckweed out. I don't like that. I know it covers the top. Uh, but in other words, <laughs> yeah, the idea is to have to have uh, uh, enough plants in there that it looks well planted to begin with. Not just one or two in hopes they're going to take over and run any everything. They probably won't. They'll probably die out. The more plants you have in the in in a new tank. The better off that tank is going to be and the better the plants are going to do. Now, obviously, they need nutrition. But if you've got, excuse me, if you've got a deep sand bed with soil as a base and you're planting those plants halfway down in the sand, the root systems will find nutrition. They'll get down in there a little deeper. and They'll be able to find something to, to eat. You're also going to be, you're going to have fish in there. Fish produce waste. Whether you're feeding them or not, they produce waste. That waste nurtures plants. It gets down, it gets down into the sand, into the substrate, and provides nutrition for plants. You've got to have both. Don't try to do a, a, a planted tank without fish. You have to have fish in there. Otherwise, they're not going to get any nutrition. It comes from the fish. This is, it's a chain. It's a balanced system. You have to have all of the elements in place for it to be alive. I had somebody in yesterday. Wanted to know what was wrong with their goldfish pond. I said, well, what do you mean? Well, it's, it's got this thick slime on the top. Never had a thick, I've had it for years. Never had a thick slime on it. And I've been dosing it, he says, but now I got this thing. Oh, dosing? What are you dosing with? What do you, oh, well, I get algae and I have to kill the algae. Aha. You see what he did? <laughs> so I said to him, here's what you've done. You, you have killed 50% of the life cycle in that system. So it's impossible for the other 50% to thrive. It's hitting a wall, a chemical wall. And as a result, it's dying 
and forming this thick slime at the top. What you've got is a dead pond. Very simple. He said, well, what do I do about it? I said, it's very simple. Turn the hose on, throw it in the pond, and walk away for at least a day. He has a big enough pond. He can do that. Water change it. Rinse the whole thing out. Start over again with it. Change. Do a, a substantial water change. First thing you have to do is get rid of that chemical and then never use it again because all it does is kill stuff. And you don't want to kill stuff. You want to keep stuff alive, not kill stuff. If you have a problem with one thing taking over, do something with something alive to deal with that. Don't poison it. We've got this stupid notion that if something goes wrong in a tank, we need to throw poison in it. That's outrageous. It's fundamentally outrageous to do such a thing. My God. Don't do it. <laughs> Moving right along. Okay. Well, TJ's would like to know, is it safe to move plants from a farm pond? He did see some nice hair grass in there, but he's worried about bringing disease and fungus in if he does that. I don't do you know. see disease and fungus in the farm pond? Examine the farm pond carefully. Look, look at it. Look at the fish in it. Catch some if you need to. Make sure they're healthy. Make sure there's no visible disease in there. And then by all means, bring those plants in and plant them with the dirt. The likelihood of your bringing parasites or disease is a, a number approaching zero. It is infinitely difficult to do that unless you have a foul condition to begin with, your tank will overcome whatever microscopic dangerous thing might be brought in. Here's the key, bacteria. Bacteria becomes a problem when it takes over an environment. It takes over an environment when there is far too much nutrition in that environment and the, the, uh, uh, the animal life and, and the other uh, aerobic activity that's there can't deal with it all and it begins to rot. That rot is bacteria breaking it down. If it's a substantial amount, it will it will rot it substantially and create a blossom, a bloom of bacteria. That's when bacteria becomes a problem. If you bring if you bring bacteria in in, a, in on a plant and you put it in your tank. All you're really doing is increasing the variety of life in that tank, which is highly beneficial to its ability to sustain itself. Monoculture never, monoculture is never sustainable. Having a single thing, a single living thing, no other living thing. That one single living thing in your tank is not sustainable. If you have a fish and you love that fish and you keep that fish in an absolutely sterile environment, nothing else alive in that tank, mm -hmm. and you change that water day after day, minute after minute, second after second, so nothing ever lives in there, and you pour toxins in it to make sure you're killing any other life. What's going to happen? It's going to happen. That fish is going to die. It's going to die, right. Your water is going to crash. The fish is going to die. And you're probably going to get a bacteria that will kill your fish. 
That's exactly right, because it'll be a monoculture. You'll get one bacteria in there that'll go, wow, what a place. And they'll go, yep. and explode in the tank. How I got hole in the head with my betta fish. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> when I early on kept bettas in a sterile bowl. That's exactly right. The more culture, the more living matter, the wider the range of living matter. Let me do it this way, just to, to try to help understand. Uh, I've mentioned GARF, G-A-R-F. Uh, don't know if they even exist anymore. 20 years ago, they were the biggest thing in, in uh, aquaculture. And for 10, 15, almost 20 years, they remained such. Uh, the, the, owner, uh, the owner died, her husband tried to carry on. I think it's, it's become uh, less and less presence on the web. I'll just put it that way. But what they were doing, they were gathering soil, dirt, mud, bacterial culture from literally all over the world and culturing it in their systems such that they had a culture that was some of the richest bioculture in the world. It provided an ability to sustain long-term living culture that simply did not break down, did not, uh, uh, did not overwhelm the system. It, it created, the more they had, the better the balance was. And with substantial amounts of culture, they found that the richest, by the richest bacterial culture anywhere in the world was the mangrove swamps in Australia. And they brought mud up from the mangrove swamps in Australia, as well as from every place else they could get to in the world. And they put it all together and they sold this, what they referred to as miracle mud. There was really the foundational study for, for understanding what dirted tanks are all about. The more bacteria, the more varieties of bacteria you have in your system, the healthier and better balanced that system is going to be. What else you got, Cass? <laughs> Well, I hope you found something you've never seen before. Have a great day. Nice having you with us. Come on back. <laughs>